and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Okay, so we finally have an official Unity update. There is a blog post which contains all of the details, alongside a really huge FAQ answering tons of questions, and a nice interactive calculator. Now I have to say, as soon as I read the update I was generally quite shocked, and I mean that in a very, very positive way, and this is exactly the reason why, beginning with the next LTS version of Unity. So that means no retroactive changes, nothing applies to games that are already out, or games coming out in the future that are made with the current or any previous Unity LTS. Now this is huge, this is the main thing that a lot of people rightfully railed against, and like I said I'm generally very positively shocked, I definitely did not expect them to roll back this part when this whole thing started. Basically my assumption was that Unity desperately needed to get some money from the likes of Genshin Impact and Marvel Snap, so those are the games that are making hundreds of millions of dollars and have been out for many years, and basically the only way to get money from those would be to make the fee apply retroactively, basically changing the terms after the fact, which is a very scummy move. So because of that I believe they were going to stick with it and apply new rules retroactively. Doing that would have made them some short term profits because they would get the fee from those games and many others that are already out, but of course that would come at the very expensive cost of trust which I believe would have possibly started Unity on a long term downward spiral. However I am very very happy to have been wrong about that, as this update the fee will only apply to games being made with the next LTS version of Unity. Also with regards to the terms of service questions, as it says here, we will make sure you can stay on the terms of applicable for the version of the Unity editor you're using. So the TOS is now per version and it stays fixed to that Unity version. And they are also republishing the GitHub repository, so you can now come here to track any changes in the TOS. So I'm very happy to see them willing to sacrifice short term profits in order to do the right thing. This was really the main sticking point for a lot of people. So now I do question if this will help in regaining trust in the eyes of those people, maybe, maybe not. Basically now as a developer you have a choice, you can choose what terms you want to stick to. For example, if you look at all of the other changes and you still dislike the fee, you can stick with Unity 22 LTS and you will never pay any fee anything. That's the current LTS, for example that's the version that I'm using in my own game. The LTS versions are supported for 2 years and after that it's not like things stop working, so technically if you really dislike the proposed fee but you still really like the engine, then you can keep using it until 2025 and way beyond without any new terms placed upon you. This is a really excellent thing which should hopefully regain some trust and give some much needed assurance to people making games with Unity on a multi-year timeline. And this is also a very good thing because means they now have a very clear, very strong incentive to make future versions of the engine as awesome as possible. Obviously they want very successful games to be made with a version that has this fee, so they need to make future versions of the engine super awesome in order to convince those people to upgrade and get onto new terms. Now for indies like myself, since a few will never apply because none of my games will ever make 1 million, for me I don't really need much convincing to upgrade, but for devs like Genshin Impact and Marvel Snap, for those hyper successful games the fee will be a decent amount, so it's going to require adding some really awesome features to the engine to make those devs feel like the upgrade is indeed worth the fee. That very clear incentive is a very positive thing for literally every developer of every size that uses Unity, so that makes me very excited about the upcoming Unite conference. So yep, just this one change is huge, and like I said I was really very shocked, I generally did not expect this to happen, I'm very happy to see them willing to sacrifice short term profits in order to do the right thing for the long term. Now I'm very curious to see the response to this, if you yourself are one of the people who had decided that you were completely done with Unity, that trust had been completely broken, if that's you then my question to you is does this change anything? Do you still plan to quit Unity, or does this provide enough assurance for you to continue using it? I'm really very curious to see the response to this one change. I'm recording this as soon as the blog post went live, so I haven't seen anyone else's reactions. However, that's really just the main positive change, but there are several other positive ones. Thankfully, it looks like they're actually implementing literally all of the things that I suggested, although I really don't want to take any personal credit for that. Everything that I suggested comes from reading all the feedback in the community, everything that all of you said. I've read all of the literally thousands of comments on my videos, as well as thousands of tweets, forum, and reddit posts. So what I posted, that was definitely an amalgamation of everything that I read. I've definitely spent way too much time trying to follow this whole thing. Making progress on my own game has been quite a bit slower because of that. Anyway, so one of the main things they implemented is a simple 2.5% revenue cap. The main comparison is in real, which has 5%, so this is a great deal. And this one very simple change means that all of those apocalyptic scenarios where the fee ends up being literally more money than the game made, with this one change that is no longer possible. And note how this number is a cap, meaning this is going to be the absolute maximum, meaning that the fee for the games that do apply, it will always be guaranteed to be less than this amount. So for example those games that have millions of downloads and almost no revenue, they will no longer go bankrupt because of the fee, absolute worst case scenario they pay 2.5%, but in most cases they're going to pay less than that. Also related to that is what about all the per install nonsense, all the issues with reinstalls, piracy, multi-device and so on, 
Thankfully for this, this is only going to be based on self-reported data. Meaning you do not need to trust Unity's super special hidden algorithm for counting installs or anything. The developers give them the numbers and they just do some simple math based on that. And all of the confusion with regards to the word installs, which really makes no sense in premium games. Now that very clearly means number of units sold. Now instead of the word installs, the word that they're using is initial engagements. So on free to play games, those are unique downloads. And for people like myself selling games on Steam, this really just means sales. They define here in the FAQ what exactly is an initial engagement and all the various things that don't count. So it does not matter how many times a person installs or reinstalls. It does not count when people part your game. It does not count refunds. One copy sold just counts as one for counting the fee amount. Again, obviously only if you are above the threshold or if you don't even want to deal with any of this at all, you don't have to. You can just pay 2.5% and that's it. No worries. So this is yet another really positive change. So with this, my question is, will they require all developers to self-report some data, even for example, the ones that are clearly below the threshold? Like in my example, none of my games will ever make a million dollars and sell one million copies. So do I still have to send my stats? It seems that's not clear at this point, but either way, this is a very positive change. Very positive to be able to let developers self-report. This means that Unity is now trusting the developers to be honest. The developers do not have to trust Unity at all. That's huge. And with regards to tracking installs, people are also concerned about privacy about Unity somehow forcing some connection in your game. So like it says over here on the FAQ, nope, it does not phone home by default. Obviously, unless you use the services that require it, like the cloud diagnostics or analytics. The next positive change is with regards to Unity Personal. This is the free license. Previously, you needed to upgrade from Personal to Plus once you had 100K in revenue or funding. Whereas now, since Plus is gone, you only need to upgrade to Pro when you are above 200K. So that's literally a doubling of revenue. There's no need to pay for anything at all until you already have a pretty successful game. And just in case it wasn't clear, there is no runtime fee on personal. So you could make a completely free game, get 1 billion downloads, and you wouldn't have to pay Unity 1 cent. Even when you upgrade to Pro, there is still no fee until you have made 1 million in the last 12 months and have sold a million copies. And yet another very positive change and one that people have wanted for literal years, you can now remove the Made with Unity splash screen. Previously, there were people who only paid for Unity Plus just to remove the splash screen and nothing else. And with the removal of Plus, those people would have had to pay 2000 for Pro just to remove that splash screen. So thankfully, you can now stick with the completely free personal version and just remove it. There's no need to pay for anything. And the other suggestion that I made was regarding the online requirement for personal. For some reason, they changed it from 30 days to 3. Well, thankfully now, once again, they have changed it and now it is 30 days while offline. So if you are the kind of person who likes to develop games in the middle of the wilderness, then you can keep doing that. Something that was hugely missing from the initial announcement was just a simple calculator, so thankfully they do have one now. And again, like it says here, no games created with any currently supported Unity versions are impacted this. This is just to calculate what the fee might be for future games on the future terms. And the calculator is really pretty easy to use. So starting on Unity Personal, so the free version. Very simple questions. Does your business revenue exceed 200k? Nope. Is your game created with 2023 LTS or later? Nope. Then yep, runtime fees do not apply. Now if you upgrade to 23 LTS next year, if you go to yes, then nope, runtime fees still do not apply. So there are no fees on the personal plan and the personal plan has a revenue limit of 200K. So if you do get over 200K, then you need to upgrade to Unity Pro. So let's see Unity Pro. Again, simple questions. And again, keep in mind these conditions are an and. So if you're using Unity Pro, but under 1 million revenue and 1 million downloads and not using 23, then again, no runtime fee. Even if you make above 1 mil and get above 1 million downloads, if you don't use 23 LTS, nope, there's no fee. And if you do use the 23 LTS, let's see. So let's say, for example, my upcoming game, Dinky Guardians. Let's say by some miracle, the game sells 1 million copies. The game is going to be 15 bucks, so 1 million copies would be 15 million in gross revenue. Then let's say after selling those 1 million copies, let's say the next month I sell 100,000 copies more. So 100,000 copies would be an extra 1.5 mil. So with that month, with those 1.5 million revenue, I would end up paying 10 grand, which equals to 0.72. Now let's see those examples where basically a developer could go bankrupt if you had hundreds of millions of installs, but barely any revenue. So let's put this to the max. So let's say for a free to play game, after having 1 million installs and 1 million in revenue, let's say you get 1 million new installs per month. And for some reason, those installs don't monetize. So let's say you just make hundred bucks out of that 1 mil, then the total would be just three bucks, which caps at 2.5%. So thankfully, those insane scenarios of developers going bankrupt, that is thankfully no longer possible. Absolute worst case scenario, you pay 2.5%, but like we saw in most cases, it's way, way under that. And again, remember these conditions are an and, meaning for premium games, like indie games, if you sell, for example, 500,000 copies, 
then you don't pay anything regardless of how much money you actually make from those 500,000 copies. And again, for devs on the same scale as me, which I assume is most of the audience on this channel, then for that the fee is always going to be zero when using Unity Free, and will likely also be zero when using Unity Pro. For example, in my case, I've been successfully making a living from my indie games for over 10 years now, and none of my games have ever made $1 million, and none of my games have sold 1 million copies. Now honestly, I think if this had been the original plan since the very beginning, I don't think people would have been angry. I mean, obviously no one likes to pay more, but the way the fee is structured right now, it seems pretty fair while only being targeted at the super huge hits, alongside obviously no retroactive changes. So in the end, this whole thing started as a huge mess, but you could actually argue that Unity is better now than it was before. Now you can use Unity completely for free until 200k instead of the previous 100k. You can also remove the splash screen with just the free version. And like I said, I think that now they have a very clear incentive to make the best engine they can make in order to convince people to upgrade to the version that has the fee. And also the fact that they made such a huge blunder that seriously put their entire existence at risk. Hopefully one positive change to come out of that is some kind of internal analysis on how such a half-baked plan was designed to ensure that such a blunder pretty much never happens again. Not to mention how it's also a positive how they listen to feedback. I can share that myself and several other Unity insiders were invited to give feedback on a draft version of this plan, and I can say that our feedback and that of many others was indeed listened to. Whereas two weeks ago for the initial structure, it appears they did not take any internal or external feedback. So I really hope that attitude of listening to the people that actually use Unity, I hope that does continue. Then the question is, do these changes convince those people who had completely given up on Unity or not? This whole saga kind of reminds me of Cyberpunk. That was a game that was completely broken at launch for so many people, it was a huge disaster. But now the first DLC is finally coming out and reviews are all excellent, both for the DLC and the updates to the game itself. So that makes me wonder if the same thing could happen with Unity. Could they wow people with future versions of the engine? Could they add such awesome great new tools and features to the point where they redeem themselves in the eyes of the people they lost? I'm definitely very curious to see what will happen. Either way, I'm also simply happy to see the end of this whole saga. Following this whole thing has caused quite a lot of anxiety to tons of people, myself included. I definitely spent way too long reading thousands of comments when I really should have been working on my game. So I'm going to right now get back to doing exactly that. The release really date is on October 2nd and I still got tons of work to do. Go add it to your wishlist and stay tuned for the final release. I really hope you'll enjoy the final game. Like I said, do let me know in the comments what you think of all of this. I'm very interested to see the community reaction to this update to see if there's anything I'm missing or if it really is as positive as I'm interpreting. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.